Hello, YouTube buddies. How y'all doing? It's been a little bit since I've done a video. I think it was last week, but um, I've been kind of busy, but I wanted to make sure I did one, at least try to do one today. Um, I never really practice these or anything. I just kind of do them. I just let God lead me into whatever he wants me to do. So uh, I'm just sitting here at the table and you can see all my kitchen a little bit behind me and my journaling tote there with all my stuff in it. I usually do my journaling right here. Uh, but I hope you're all doing good. Um, I want to thank everybody first off. I've getting, I'm getting subscribers that I just could not believe I'm getting so many and that just tickles me. Not that I'm on a kick about how many subscribers I can get, but it just means that at least things that I'm doing are getting out there and hopefully making a difference in somebody's day. Uh, I'm getting all kinds of nice comments and um, I really appreciate that. Everybody's so sweet. And I try to answer everybody back. As soon as I see it on my phone, I try to answer you back and make another sincere comment back to you. Uh, if I have missed anyone, I'm so sorry. I try to even double check, but I appreciate every comment on there. And I'm so glad that I'm making people, um, not really making your day. I mean, I'm not on a big ego trip or anything like that, but I think you help me out too. So it's kind of, uh, I'm enjoying you. So, I am going to keep doing these videos. I am um, going to try to do um, some kind of Bible study. Um, I'm, I'm doing uh, today just a little one just about um, God in our lives and um, Satan, how he tries to deter what we've got going on. And um, I've got some favorite things here to go over. I was going to do an update on my uh, homemade uh, traveler's notebook. <laughs> Um, and my planner thing that I've got going on, um, I was going to go over that just for a little bit. I'm not doing anything amazing in it or anything like that. I told you all, I think, before that I don't have a lot going on. I mean, I see a lot of these people on YouTube that do their planners so pretty and do all this special stickers and stuff in it and everything and then make their little dots to put everything down. And that's awesome, but some of them, I mean... They don't really have a lot going on either. So they'll put down like a do the dishes or do the laundry or I need to dust or I'm like, I already know all that stuff. So I don't really need to write it down and have another thing to do to write that down and then go check it off, you know, and that's great if you do that. I'm not knocking you for it or anything. I'm just saying I, that's just not something I would be doing probably. So anyway, um, I did want to show you first. Uh, this is the little traveler's uh, notebook that I made. I showed you all this last time. Uh, and it's actually working out good. When I did my last video, I had just started using it. So I was like, I don't even know what I'm going to use these books in here for. But I found a reason for them, and it's really working out good. Um, I, put some, I don't remember if I had the stickers on here the last time or not. I don't remember. But I added some stickers to it. Um, let's see. And I've got, I think, uh, one, two, three three, one, two, three notebooks and a little pocket calendar in here. Um, in case you missed it the last time, I'll just do a little quickie here. I, uh, I got my rubber bands here holding it together. Um, I've got, um, hang on a minute, I'll hit a snag. Here we go. Uh, the first one here, um, I put Choose Joy and put some stickers on it and stuff. Um, I'm using it kind of like, um, I wouldn't really say a tracker. I'm using it just for like my notes, anything that I would want to keep up with that I've got going on in my life, actually, I put in that. Um, also, um, I've got my little, I showed you my little pocket calendar that I've got in here that I write things in. It's got my uh, daily, monthly uh, Bible study that I'm doing through the month of May. And um, then the next book, after that notebook, I am doing the actual Bible study in it. And I like this so well because I can take these little notebooks out. I don't have to leave them in here when I'm writing in them. I can take them out. So, you know, I have an even level surface to write on and stuff. And, uh, excuse me. I... Another one of my favorite things is my fan that I keep with me everywhere I go because <laughs> I get hot. And all you ladies my age know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just like poof. <laughs> it's like I'm going up in a heat stroke or something. <laughs> oh, gosh. But anyway, I always keep that fan with me. I just, 
when the people were running for president and there was one, and I can't remember who it was, but he always took a fan with him everywhere he went and he would put it like down at the bottom of the podium or whatever where nobody else could see it, but he took a fan with him everywhere he went. And I said, I'm just like that guy. I have to have a fan. I've got one by my chair. I've got one in the kitchen. I've got one over by the bathroom. When I'm getting my makeup on, I turn it on and it blows toward the bathroom and cools me off. I just burn up sometimes. But I don't know. It's not, it's my age. I probably is what it is. But anyway, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to get off track, but <laughs> oh goodness. I was having another heat wave as my grandchildren used to, or my children used to call it with uh, my mom when she was about my age and she'd babysit them. And my mom would have a hot flash. My little girls would say, Mamma's having another heat wave. <laughs> they called it a heat wave. <laughs> so I'm having a heat wave. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, back to my traveler's notebook um, where I'm doing my Bible journaling and stuff. Um, sometimes I do more than one day on a page. It just depends on what, you know, what, I, what I'm doing, what the verse says to me, you know. But I like this because I can just slip these notebooks right out. You know, it's so easy. Just slip it out and then I've got a notebook to write in. I just put it down on the table. There's nothing hindering me. I don't have anything behind it, you know, bumping my writing up or anything. It's just, and I just stick it right back in the rubber band and it's good to go. Just, just that fast. <laughs> so I like that. Uh, the next one that I've got, I'm doing like just a little daily journal. Um, I'm doing a journal of um, just things about my day. You know, each day I try to write like a little diary type thing. I try to write um, if it's sunny outside and the weather and things about that's gone on in my day. You know, it's nothing too deep, but uh, sometimes I decorate it up a little bit with uh, some washi tape and stuff. Um, but anyway, I try to do that with that third notebook. So it actually is working out really good. I did this to see if I would want to do a regular traveler's notebook. But I'll tell you, I kind of like this one because number one, I did it by myself. I took some cardstock and laminated it and made the outside cover and then just took rubber bands and put my little notebooks in there. You know, I put a little pen loop on it. I got a little self-adhesive pen loop and put that on there. So I've got an ink pen on it now and I put one of my little thingies in there that I, those little uh, paper clip doodads that you make. But anyway, it is working out good. I thought I'd let you know that, that I actually like using this and I'll probably continue to use it. I use it just as much as my other notebooks really. Um, my planner that I was going uh, through and doing, um, I do it a little bit. I'm, I just, I don't know. I just really don't do enough other than doctor's appointments or something to fill it up. So I did go through and um, every week I tried to, uh, let me get this one, count. I mean, I've got so many calendars, it's turned into a job. So that's one reason I've kind of finagled around not to do it. But what, uh, what I've done is just, I've just put washi tapes and stuff in them to make the days look a little different and kind of, you know, cutes them up just a little bit. It does make it a little more interesting to look at than blank pages and stuff. So um, I did try to do that some, but I mean, I really don't write a lot in it. I do try to do a little bit neater when I'm writing my notes in than I did before, but sometimes, I mean, if I find something out and I'm in a hurry, I'm just scribbling on that day. I try not to be too awful about it, but I mean, life happens, you just do it and get over with, you know. <laughs> um, I wanted to go over today a little, um, a little bit of a lesson talking about um, how Jesus works in our life. And we all have different callings, I guess, different talents, talents that Jesus uses for his good. And sometimes we're afraid to put ourselves out there uh, doing this. I really thought about this for a long time because I thought, is that me wanting to do this or is that God telling me to do this? You know, it could be Satan setting me up for failure or God need me to do this. Well, I wasn't going to risk not doing what God told me to do. Whatever the reason was, I was doing it because I really, really felt like God was telling me to. And if it just helps one person every now and then, it'll be worth it, you know, because um, you all mean the world to me. I love all my subscribers. I appreciate you so much and your comments. You all just don't know how much that means to me. You all, you know, I might be all perky on here and stuff, but I'm not like this all the time. I'm just like everybody else. I mean, I have bad days and ho-hum days and sad sack days, you know. Uh, get on the pity pot and don't want to get off, you know, but um, 
I, I try to be cheerful as much as I can, but I have my moments like everybody else. So, you know, I'm not on here putting on the dog, you know, like, I don't know if y'all say that or not. <laughs> some of us have sayings in the areas we live in and you think everybody knows what you're talking about. And some people are like, what's she talking about her dog? You know, no. I just mean, I'm not putting on a fake persona. I mean, I'm not trying to be a make-believe person. This is me, I'm who I am. I don't try to be fake on here. I'm just who I am. You know, people, I'm not for everybody. You know, take me or leave me, I, you know, I can't help that. But I just uh, try to do what I think God tells me to do. And, um, and, you know, Satan tries to get in our way of doing things sometimes, especially if we're doing it for the right reasons. He will try to throw a roadblock, you know, everywhere he can to interfere with our lives. And the more you work for God, the more he's going to work, that Satan is going to try to work on you because he doesn't like that. That means you're getting closer to God and you're, you know, you've got your relationship with him. You read your Bible, you do your Bible studies or just write scripture, journaling, you know, just write the scriptures. I do that sometimes. Um, I've been trying to go through Proverbs. Um, I hadn't really realized it, really thought about it until I seen somebody on YouTube talking about, you know, there's a proverb really for every day of the month. I think there's 31 Proverbs, if I'm not mistaken, that there's, um, you know, at least there's one for every day of the month. And then when you get to the end, you can go back and start at Proverbs 1 and go through it all again. And, um, you know, that's something that you can do. The Proverbs are just chocked full of information and good things to go by and things to bring your attention to, to maybe avoid. Um, but, you know, just ideas like that. Sometimes I just write a proverb a day or read a proverb a day, you know. I do everything I can to stay close to God. And Satan probably doesn't like that. So, you know, he'll throw a curve every time he gets a chance. You know, he'll tell me, you know, nobody's gonna watch these, you know. Uh, nobody's gonna like you. Nobody's gonna wanna watch these videos. You've got a Kentucky accent. Nobody's gonna know what you're saying. Or, you know, your hair looks awful. Or they're gonna think you're ugly. Or, you know, they're gonna think you don't know what you're talking about. You know, Satan just full, fills our heads full stuff all the time. And I know he does you the same way about whatever, you know. But I'm doing this, and Satan can just go take a back seat somewhere down the road because I'm doing this. And if nobody watches it, you know, I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> but he will try to put a glitch in everything we do no matter what. Uh, going to church, when you're in church and you're sitting there trying to listen to a sermon, you know, and you're really paying attention, but then Satan's putting these thoughts in your head and getting you kind of zoned off of what you're doing. And you've got to really concentrate on, on what's being preached and things that you need to know that he don't want you to hear. Satan doesn't want you to hear the good stuff. You know, he wants to keep you sidetracked. And we just have to be aware that, you know, Satan's not welcome here. And he should know that. And he just needs to move on down the road because we belong to God. And um, he'll try to keep you distracted in church while you're listening to a message. He'll tell you, uh, what are you going to eat for supper? Or was it, where are you going to go to eat after church? Or I wonder if that chicken's thawed out yet you got laid out for dinner after church. Or, you know, gee, I hate going back to work tomorrow. It's Monday, you know. Just stuff like that to get you sidetracked in your mind. And then that gets you thinking about work. Oh, I've got those reports due tomorrow, you know. Don't let him in. Just tell him, Satan, leave and leave us alone. We are not going to play your game. So you're just, you're lost cause, you know. Um, I know, um, <laughs> here's a funny little story I'll tell on myself. I hope I can tell it right. We'll see. This happened several years ago. But I was going to a church at that time. And uh, it was, I don't know if I'd call it a mega church. Because around here we don't have any super humongous churches really but it is a very large church and it had like you know the regular ground seating and then it had the side you know aisles that go up on the sides and then you've got a whole balcony up ahead of, uh, ahead of you up on above you and um anyway I usually sat up in the balcony because I just liked it up there I've always liked sitting in the balconies at churches I don't know what it is it's just so open and I just feel God I don't know it maybe it's just me but I just like being up there and uh it was one day I was going to church and I hate to go in late anywhere. And I was running behind and I, you know, pull in the parking lot, er, you know, <laughs> like two wheels, you know. And I sat there for a minute because I'm looking around and all the cars are empty and there's a lot of cars there. 
I'm like, oh, I'm late. Oh, man. You know, well, Satan starts working on me. Now, you don't want to walk in there. Everybody's going to turn around and look at you. Uh, they're going to know you walked in late, and uh, then they'll be staring at you, and look at what you've got on, and you've got better clothes than this. They're all going to be dressed up fancy or, you know, just anything he could think of to tell me. You don't want to get out and go in. Just go back home. You know, you've already missed the mark. You're going to be late. Well, I sat there for a minute or two thinking, oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And then I thought, wait a minute, I don't know what to do. I'm going in church, that's what I got ready for, that's where I come to. I mean, they're probably not even doing hardly anything yet. You know, I'm going in there. I might have missed two minutes, but I've still got another 50 some to go, you know, so I'm going in. So here I go, tromping through the parking lot. I sounded like a Clydesdale horse when them shoes all clip, 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 you know, just blah, 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 three. <laughs> parking lot I sound like a horse around it. So I get up to the door, you know, and I stop and I'm, you know, straight myself up. So I just walk in the door, you know, the guys or the doormen, you know, people are standing there, the greeters. And uh, I said, hello, you know, they're like, hi. Well, my mom and my uh, uncle and my aunt, a uh, few people was going to meet me there while I was late. And I told them to save me a seat, but now I was late and now everybody's in there and I'm like, I don't even know where they're sitting. I'll walk in there and look around. Oh, this ain't gonna be good. So anyway, I go to walk into the church to look for them. And when I open them doors through, there was a guy standing there with the communion platter, you know, the communion bowl thing with the little cups in it. I almost cut my hair of knocking that thing all over him. Oh my gosh. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm so sorry. It, it didn't fall on him. I mean, he didn't slosh it, but just uh, if he took one more step or I'd have been a few seconds earlier, we'd have had a big embarrassing catastrophe. But God prevented that from happening. So anyway, I took a quick glance around and I didn't see my aunt and uncle or my mom anywhere. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to the balcony, you know. So I go back out and go up the stairs and um, go up to the balcony. Well, to describe this the best I can, uh, when you go up both sides of the church up to the balcony, there's like a row, you know, there's like a stairway that goes up to the very top. Well, I go up those stairs, and then when you go, you know, you get to the top, and then here's all the seating, you know. If I'm facing the people, this is all the seating up there. Well, if you go straight up those steps, you know, the bench on the very top, the top bench comes all the way over, you know, from the steps, you know, like you got steps. Well, there's a bench on the top right in front of the steps. As you go up, you can just turn around and sit down. Well, that's what I did. I thought, well, they were getting ready to pray. And so I just go up there and kind of creep up the steps, you know, kind of hunker down and go up the steps, up the steps. And then I get to the top of the steps and I just turn around and sit down on that seat right there. I didn't even go over into the pew. I just kind of sat right there real quick. Well, then it was time to pray, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm out of breath and everything's going wrong and my mind's racing, you know. So anyway, I'm sitting there and they're getting ready to pray. So they said, let us all stand. Well, when I stood up real quick, I hit my head on the top of one of them beams that goes through the top of the ceiling of the church. Oh my gosh, you'd never heard a big thump in your whole life like that. I mean, you could hear it all over the church. It's just like it echoed, you know, plus it hurt. So as soon as I stood up, I clumped my head, and I'm like, oh no. And, there, and the people that were kind of like in front and to the side of me, because there was no one in front of me, except the steps were there. So the people that were kind of sitting down to the right of me, you know, just kind of looked back a little bit, and I just kind of smiled, I'm like, I'm not in pain, you know, this is fine, I'm so sorry I made a noise, you know. <laughs> On the inside, I'm like, my head hurts. <laughs> So anyway, I'm like, oh my gosh. So, you know, I bowed my head and we prayed and everything. Well, then, I mean, this was like the catastrophe day, I swear. <laughs> I was bound and determined to get in that church, and I'm glad I went, but boy, Satan sure did try to work on me that day. So anyway, when the prayer was over and it's time to sit down, I scoot over into a pew, just kind of scoot over on that same bench and sit down where there's no beam above me because apparently you're really not supposed to sit there because I'm tall. So when I got up real quick, clunk, I hit my head on that beam. Well, if you sit in the pew where you're actually supposed to sit, there's no beam there. So, you know, <laughs> of course I would sit where the beam is. So anyway, I'm sitting there trying to get myself all gathered back up real good. So here they come with the communion thing. So I'm like, I've done this a billion times. This is good. Just quit shaking. Just calm down, you know, because I was nervous. And so I was sitting there, and they bring the communion platter thing to me. Well, when I get the little cup thing out, the little clear cup, you know, you take your drink and you put it back in. Well, when I did that, I felt like I didn't go all the way back far enough, and it, 
I didn't know if you could really tell somebody drank out of it or not. Because I, when I put it back down in there, I'm like, that looks kind of like the rest of them. So what I did was I picked it up again and slung it back and put it back down again, making sure that it was empty enough nobody drank after me or whatever. And I guess the guy at the communion thing thought I took two of them. So he gave me the funniest look. anything I'm like oh my goodness I'm not moving I'm sitting here I am so done I'm just gonna get a message out this Sunday and call it a day I can't do nothing else that I'm not already done I feel silly as I could be but I think he thought I, I must have been real bad and took two communion things but I didn't I only took one but I was afraid I didn't drink enough so I turned it up again <laughs> put it back down again Oh, that was that's just what I'm talking about. Satan will try to put any kind of stumbling block in front of you. And someone as klutzy and clumsy as me, he don't have to work real hard. But God put a shield around me and made it okay. And it was a great Sunday. The service was great. Everything after that went fine. And after church, I found my family. You know, after church, everybody goes out and they're like, we didn't, we didn't know if you were here or not. We didn't see you anywhere. And I said, well, it's kind of late. I said, and I hit my head right before prayer up there on one of them beams, and they said, was that noise you? And I'm like, yes, that was my head hitting that beam. I've got a concussion. <laughs> they're like, let's shake their head, roll their eyes. That's, that's everybody's look for me is roll your eyes. <laughs> it's a Sharibi moment. <laughs> but, you know, don't let Satan get in your way and talk you out of stuff. The bottom line is you be strong, and you do it for God. No matter what you're doing, you do it for God. And, uh... You know, we sing gospel music some, and, you know, that took a lot of guts to do that, get up in front of people and sing, you know, what if I make a mistake or something. But you know what? God knows my heart, and I do it for God. I don't do it for other people. Yes, I hope they get a great blessing from it and a message from it, but I have to do it for God's glory, uh, just like I'm trying to do this. And, um, you know, just be aware whenever you do things that um, you don't let Satan talk you out of some stuff. And you, the closer you are with God and the more you read your Bible and do Bible studies, you'll be close to God. And you'll know if you're hearing from God or not. You know, just pray about it and you'll know. Um, but that was all I had about that, really. Um, but I just don't want everybody to let uh, Satan deter you from doing things that you think you need to be doing. And be kind to others, you know. Uh, you don't have to be on YouTube or go sing a song somewhere, you know, where there's a lot of people or anything like that. You can just be kind to your neighbor. How many of us don't even really know our neighbors, really? You know, I know a few of them around here, but I don't know all of them. And, um, you know, we just need to be kind. If, you're, if your neighbor's out mowing grass and it's really hot outside, take them a bottle of water or her. You know, take them a bottle of water. You know, just be nice. Just do nice gestures. Do an act of kindness every now and then. They call them random.